Hello everyone and welcome back to my beginner series videos. This is video number four out of 12. I am so excited about this series and I've received some really good feedback that you're enjoying these videos and these how-tos. So that makes me so happy. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you find my videos helpful. Today we're gonna talk about stamp pads ink pads. That's right. So if you look at your Stampin' Up! catalog, we have all kinds of ink pads in there in different colors, but we also have um, some other ink pads as well. So I'm excited to kind of give you a stamp pad, ink pad 101, and um, we're going to talk about the different purposes for each of them. As a beginner, it can be overwhelming when you think about, okay, what do I need a stamp, this stamp pad for, and which colors should I pick, and how do I get started? So I'm excited to kind of break all that down for you and hopefully offer you some clarity on which stamp pads to start with and get you on your stamping journey. So here is a color family of stamp pads. And so you'll see there's 10 stamp pads here. They're absolutely beautiful. This color family is called our Bold Collection. I'm sorry, our Brights Collection. So this is our Brights collection. I just pulled in my Stampin' Up! catalog, and you can see here, this is our Brights collection of, of stamp pads. And then we have our Neutral collection and our Regal collection. And then up here, you'll see some Subtles. That's right. And then down here is our In Color collection. Now our In Color collection is basically a set of colors that last for about two years. So these colors were introduced in 2021, and they will retire in 2023. And these colors were introduced in 2020, and they will retire in 2022. Now you're probably wondering, well, why do I want an in color if it retires? Well, a lot of times the in colors are the trending colors of the year. You know, like some of the clothing stores, they, they have like a clothing line that's like the new trending colors. Well, that's what those in colors are. And the really cool thing about the in colors, if if, you, um, if we purchase some of these colors and we really, really like them, then Stampin' Up! when they do a color refresh every, I don't know, five to eight years, sometimes those in colors come back into our color line. So that's why we all love those in colors so much. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. What I have again here in front of me, these are our bold colors, or our brights, bold brights. And so I am just going to put these up. I'm gonna kind of stack these real quick. All right, and um, this is um, that first set of classic stamp pads. Now, you're gonna also notice that um, along with our colors, right, so these are all of our colored inks, you're gonna need a black. And we have a couple different blacks. We have a memento black, and we also have a stays on black. And so both of these blacks served a different purpose in your crafting, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that here in just a moment. We also have a clear sticky type ink, and it's called Versamark. Now, Versamark is a pigment-based type ink, and we're gonna talk about how you can use that in your crafting, along with a craft stampin' pad. So this is our white craft stamp pad, and um, it also is that pigment-based kind of sticky ink, and we're gonna talk about how you can use that as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set these guys aside. I've got little spots for each of them over here, and I'm gonna set those aside, and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly how your stamp pads come when you purchase them. But before I do that, do you notice how beautifully these are stacked? Let me show you. There's a little indent, right, or a little dimple here in the top corner. And then in the back, you're gonna kinda see a little raised piece. So that actually fits beautifully right into the notches um, on the stamp pad below it. So they just stack really nicely. It's nice and compact for your space. And um, they're just beautiful when you look at all those fabulous colors. Love it. All right, so I'm gonna show you exactly how your stamp pad comes when you purchase them. So here's a Flirty Flamingo stamp pad, and you can see it comes shrink-wrapped. So they are individually shrink-wrapped. And then you're going to open that stamp pad. And there we go, we've got that open. And this is exactly what it looks like. Now, 
as I go through this presentation, um, I'm going to share with you, I'm going to talk about the front of the stamp pad. So the front of the stamp pad is going to be underneath the logo Stampin' Up! right here. So it's going to have a little kind of notch right here. And so that is what I'm going to call the front of the stamp pad. Now here on the back, you're going to notice some stickers and I'm going to show you exactly how to use those. But first, let's talk about opening our stamp pad. So when you first get your stamp pad, it is going to be a little difficult to open and you might get a little cranky at first. But that was done by design. They are a little bit tighter so that they don't open up on you. If you were to drop them, they don't open up and they kind of hold nice and compact. So that was designed to be a bit tighter. All right, but good news is, is the more that you use these stamp pads, you open and close them, the looser that they're gonna get. So they are gonna loosen up on you a little bit. Now I've seen different ways to open up the stamp pads. Um, you know, Stampin' Up! says, you know, to take it like a compact, like a makeup compact and use your thumbs. One pulls down, one pulls up, just like that. Now for me, I find that what's easiest for me is to hold the stamp pad in my one hand. I'm kind of gripping it here in my palm and my fingertips. And then I use my fingers, I kind of brace myself here on the end, use my thumb and I pull up. Now I find that to be the easiest way to open my stamp pad. Now I have seen, seen some demonstrators and crafters kind of push right about in here and it pops this open. For whatever reason, that does not work for me. But if it works for you, that's fantastic. So again, and it might work better as you loosen up that stamp pad. So when you open up your stamp pad, it should open all the way up and you're gonna see that there is your firm foam stamp pad. And what you need to keep in mind is when you open it, you're gonna to wanna to pull it. I'm just gonna turn it this way. You're gonna to wanna to pull it all the way to the end and you actually do you hear that little click? That means you're in the position to have that hinge. So if you open it and you start getting resistance and you can't get it to turn or flip, it's because you haven't actually got into that hinge. So you want to pull it all the way so that you can hinge. All right. So now we have it open and you'll see you're going to push it right into place and it kind of locks into place. So then you're ready for some stamping. Now one thing I'm going to show you, this is a really cool trick and I am super excited about this trick. So let's just say you just, you know, your stamp pad, you've been using it and you just want it to get a little bit easier sliding back and forth. So what I recommend is um, some Vaseline or maybe some chapstick. Now through my process here, I've lost my cap. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> I'm going to have to find my cap. It's probably on the floor somewhere. Um, but I have just this little thing of Vaseline and you could take chapstick if you have chapstick and just rub it on this edge right here. The idea is, is when you flip this closed, it's going to get inside of the track and make it a lot easier to slide that stamp pad in and out. So I'm just going to put a little Vaseline on my finger and I'm going to run it kind of down this side edge. Now you don't need much. Less is more. You just need enough that you can lubricate that track. Um, so just add a little bit of Vaseline or chapstick to that edge. And then you should be able to pull this up, you know, and so let's go ahead and open this guy back up and kind of take it back and forth. Oh my gosh, look at that, how much easier that is moving already. That is awesome. And so that's what you have to keep in mind is that if you want to kind of make that you know, lubricate that track a little bit, make it a little bit easier. Maybe a bit of uh, Vaseline will do the trick for you. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about closing it. So closing it, um, there's a couple different things. You can push it from the back. You see that you can push it from the back and then pull it. I personally find it's just as easy to kind of push it and pull at the same time. And then you flip it up and then you're going to see like that. And it's going to close together. So that's how your stamp pad works. Now one of the cool things about the stamp pad is here on the back you're going to notice that there are stickers and there's four different languages on here. So you'll see the four different languages and then you're going to see a solid strip. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull off um, one of our strips. This one's Flirty Flamingo. That's the name of the stamp pad. 
We're going to go to the front of the stamp pad, which has the little notch here, and it also has my Stampin' Up! logo. And I am just going to very carefully kind of guide my sticker, and just once you get one end down, then I just kind of push on that and um, hold that in place while I stick the rest down. So that works beautifully. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take one of these other, you know, one of the other languages, let's do it this way, um, one of these other stickers, I'm just going to pull this up, and I find it's almost just easier just to do it this way. And what I like is the fact that sometimes you set your stamp pad down different ways. Now, yes, I can't read that, but I know what color that is. And so if I'm working with my colors and I set my stamp pad down, I can clearly see that that is not real red, right? That is definitely some color form of pink. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our full, you know, our solid strip out of here as well. So let's grab the solid one and we're going to open up our stamp pad. Again, I'm kind of gripping it and then popping it up, locking it into place. Now I have the solid one. So I've seen demonstrators and customers do it in different ways, and I'm going to share them both with you. You can put this little color strip here on one of your edges, one of these solid edges, or Stampin' Up! in this new redesign created this little space right down here at the end. So I recommend getting maybe a bone folder or a take your pick tool, and you're going to kind of, well, you just got to get it started in there really, and then hold that down, and then once you get it in there, you can take your take your pick tool or your bone folder and kind of smush it down in there so it stays. Now, what is that for? Well, when you have a bunch of different stamp pads all next to each other, you can see which colors they are. So see this one, I haven't even put the sticker on the inside yet. And so you can kind of get confused, but when you can see that color on there, then you go, oh yeah, that's my fl flirty flamingo stamp pad. All right, so that is the ins and outs of our Stampin' Up! Classic Stamp Pads. Now, the Classic Stamp Pads, all of these colors that I showed you earlier, these are dye-based inks. And so basically what that means is, is they are going to dye your cardstock, and they're quick to dry. So that's what I love, is when you stamp with these colors, they are very quick to dry, and they dye into the cardstock, and you are good to go. Now, they are acid-free, as well as archival, and so you might be wondering, okay, well, what exactly is archival? Well, archival is basically, um, you know, it basically Stampin' Up! is letting you know it's archival because it is resistant to weathering as well as fading. So that way you can enjoy those beautiful colors and projects a lot longer. Um, so that's what that means when you hear, um, when you hear someone talking about it's an archival type ink. All right, so I'm going to set those aside and um, I am going to pull in some cardstock. Now, one thing that um, you know beginners often ask me is, Brandy, I want to get started, but what colors should I actually start with? Because you know I don't know that I can afford like all of those different colors, and I completely understand that. So here is one of like my favorite tips. When you are stamping, you're going to hear demonstrators or customers talking about stamping off. So what that means is you're going to ink up your stamp and you're going to stamp it. When you do that, you transfer the ink in a very bold color onto your cardstock. But then if you stamp that ink again, it's basically going to be not as bright. It's going to be subtle, if you will. So by stamping it off, you know, a second time or maybe even a third time, the color is going to get lighter and lighter. So if you purchase some of our bold brights or our bright colors you're, and you stamp them off, you're going to get a subtle color. So I always recommend starting with those bright colors because when you think about all of our holidays, you think about uh, Father, or, uh, what, Valentine's Day, I don't know about Father's Day, but Valentine's Day, and you think about Christmas, maybe Easter, uh, flowers, birthdays for sure, those bold, bright colors um, are just amazing, and you can use those for just about anything. And you've got a beautiful red, yellow, green, um, blue, pinks. So, you know, they really kind of are a beautiful um, color collection that will get you started for just about almost any season. So here, I have a flirty flamingo. Um, I have a flirty flamingo stamp pad, 
and I'm going to open that up. This is the one that we just mounted and added our stickers to. Now I have a two-step stamp, meaning that there is a detailed image and then an image that kind of fills it in. So let's ink this flower up. And so this one is going to be stamped, right? Just like that. So there's stamped, here is stamped off. Look at that. So do you see, I can go from a beautiful dark flirty flamingo to more of a light flirty flamingo. And if I stamp it again, it's just gonna get even lighter. Now check this out. If I ink up the second image and I'm going to stamp it off, okay, so that's stamping it, and then I'm gonna stamp it one more time. Now I did not ink that up, did you see? And I stamped it right inside of that image. Check that out. So I just created two different colors, two different shades of this color, of this ink. And I did that by stamping it in the strong color and then stamping it again, which we call stamping off, right? Or I guess I should say that a little bit different. There's a couple different ways that you can look at that. So, um, but anyway, you're stamping, you're transferring the dark ink onto your cardstock. And then if you want it lighter, you're going to stamp it so that it gets gradually lighter. So pretty cool there. I love doing that. And so that would be my answer. You don't need all of the colors. Um, you don't need all of the bold colors. No, no, no. But what I recommend is that you pick a few that you like that will get you started. So if you're looking at making a bunch of birthday cards and you really like the blues and the greens, we'll start there, all right? So that's really all you've got to do. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. And I am just going to show you just real briefly here um, that we do have, for all of these inks, we do have reinkers. okay? So I'm just kind of showing you that we have the different reinkers, and so I will have another video on how to reink your stamp pad. So that'll be video number five. So you're gonna wanna look for that video um, for some tips and tricks on how to reink your stamp pads. Okay, so now let's talk about black ink. Because when, you know, you've got some colors, but now you need some black ink. And so we've got a couple different kinds of ink here. We have a memento black and a stays on black. So let's go ahead and talk about our memento black ink. So this ink is fade resistant and it's alcohol resistant. That is really important to know. It's also very fast in drying. It is a different type of stamp pad. So you can kind of see that when you open it up, it just kind of pulls open. You can kind of see it's a different type of stamp pad. And um, so, and it is really good for those details and for bold images. Um, let me go ahead and pull in some basic white cardstock and I'm gonna flip that over and I have a stamp here. I'm gonna ink up my stamp in memento black and then I'm gonna stamp it straight down and straight up. There you go. It looks like I got a little rocking in there, but that's okay. And so you can see how beautiful that image is. Now, when you use memento black, did you hear me say earlier that it's really good for alcohol resistance? So that means that when you use your memento black, that you would also use your Stampin' Blends if you would like to color that image. So that image should not blur um, or fade when you use your alcohol type markers. All right, now I have a tendency to use Memento Black for most of my crafting. And you know, before I take this away, you can clean the Memento Black off using Stampin' Mist. Sometimes you can just do it with water. And other times I'll use my simple chamois. So it is very, very easy to clean. So I'm just gonna kind of come over here to my chamois and kind of clean that up really good and bring that stamp back in here. So that is one type of black ink. We also have another type of black ink called Stazon. This is a solvent-based type of, of ink. Now, what does that mean? It's a permanent ink that is waterproof when it's dry. That's right, so this ink is waterproof when it's dry, and um, it creates that really nice, crisp, permanent image. It is also um, acid-free and archival, so that's good. 
Um, and it's really one of its main purposes is for water coloring, right? Because it is waterproof once it's dry. So it's really good for water coloring and it's also good to use with your stamp and write markers, which are those dye based markers that coordinate with all of our stamp pad colors. So let's go ahead and ink up. So see how that one comes off? This one's a little bit different. It actually has kind of a smell to it, kind of like black licorice. Um, so you can really tell the two apart. Um, you want to make sure you save your protective case. That goes right back on top of that when you're done. And you can set that aside. And then what I've got here is my stamp. And I'm going to ink that up here in, stays on black. And I'm going to stamp it right next to it. Well, sort of right next to it. And you can kind of see the two, all right? So you can see the two different, um, two different images, two different blacks. And again, this black is stays on. This one was done in Memento. This black is for more of that water coloring and those water-based markers. And this black is good for those alcohol type markers. Here, let's kind of flip that around. Now another, you know, so that is really cool to know. Now, as far as like which black that I think, you know, cause a lot of times people say, well, which black do you like best? I personally feel like the Memento Black is a good all around good black ink to get started with. You can stamp your images, you know, the outside designs or whatnot, and then stamp some color on the inside. You can use your, um, you know, your stamp and blend markers and so forth. So I really like the Memento Black, but I do love my stays on for my water coloring and when I'm coloring with my stamp and write marker. So they both do serve a different purpose. Okay, so now let's talk about a clear sticky type ink. Yeah, so we've got one of those as well. Um, let's talk about a clear sticky type of ink called Versamark. That is right. So here, let me get myself settled. So Versamark is an option for you as well. Now Versamark is archival and acid free as well. And you can kind of see that pad is really sticky. So the cool thing about Versamark is, is that it's going to be when you, um, so when you stamp it onto your paper, um, it's got this like ink coating on this, on this ink coating and it puts it on the surface of the paper and it doesn't get absorbed. Therefore it doesn't dry real quickly. So that way you can stamp it and then you can sprinkle some embossing powder on top of it and it will stick so that you can set it. So that's one thing that I love my Versamark is it is that sticky. It allows me to emboss beautifully with it. But another cool thing about Versamark is, is that it will allow you to take this clear ink and in a sense create a tone on tone stamp. So let's just say I didn't have Bermuda Bay but I have Bermuda Bay cardstock here and I want to stamp a Bermuda Bay background, but again, I don't have Bermuda Bay. So by inking it up in Versamark, this clear sticky ink, and stamping it straight down, you can see that I still get that kind of Bermuda Bay look, that tone on tone. So that is what um, Versamark is used for. Of course, there's different techniques and things that, um, that you can do along the way, but as you're getting started, it's really good for embossing and for that kind of tone on tone type of look. So that is Versamark. All right, and so let's, um, let's talk a little bit about craft stamp pads. Now this is a Whisper White craft stamp pad or basic white, and it's also a permanent pigment type ink. It is acid free and also archival. Um, again, this is kind of the same along the lines of Versamark, but this one's white. It's a clear, the Versamark was clear. This is a white type of ink. Really good for embossing and for, to create that opaque look on dark cardstock. Um, you, when you stamp with this type of craft ink, you just wanna make sure that you let it dry so that it doesn't smear on your project. So that is really, really important to know. All right, so today we've talked about the classic stamp pads and we've talked about the different, um, the two different blacks that we offer and which one, you know, which purpose they serve. We also talked about Versamark and we talked about 
our craft stamp pads. So lots of different options, um, but really when you're getting started, uh, paper, ink, and stamps. You're gonna need some classic stamp pads, maybe some black for your images, right? And I always suggest to throw in there a neutral. Those browns are fantastic. So I do recommend, you know, kind of trying to get yourself some browns as well. Now, one thing I wanna share with you really quickly, let's just say you aren't sure which colors you like, and you're like, okay, well, is there another option than buying all of the big stamp pads? Well, yes, there is. And so um, what you can do is, I'm gonna bring my catalog in. You can purchase the ink refills, right? But you can also purchase these uninked stamping spots. And they are available here, and I think they're in our catalog, right there, page 129. So it's number five. And you can see that they're uninked spots. And what you're gonna do is they're an inch by an inch in size. You would open them up. These actually came from Paper Pumpkin. I don't have any uninked ones myself. So I'm showing you kind of the example from a Paper Pumpkin. Um, but you open it up and then you fill it full of the color that you would like. And so you get five per package and they're called uninked stampin' spots. All right, um, okay, so I think, oh, I almost forgot to show you this really quick. Check this out. So this is a PDF um, that I've put together to help you um, and remind you kind of what the different inks are used for. So it kind of talks about the stays on and the tip for which cleaner to use and of course how it can be used on non-porous surfaces like window sheets and so forth. Um, and that it's best recommended with those stamp and write markers. You can also see I've got Versamark and the craft ink on there. And then I talk more about the dye-based inks and how you, know, how you can use those and the ink refills and then of course that memento. So this download will be available in the description of the video for you. So you'll be able to find it there, but you'll also be able to find it on brandyscards.com. And while you're there, make sure you go to brandyscards.com slash beginners and subscribe so that you are notified um, next time I publish a video. And also, those who have subscribed, you're gonna get a private invitation to an AMA, Ask Me Anything. We're gonna kinda talk about some of those questions that you had that I wasn't able to answer today. Now, I'd also love for you to leave me comments. The feedback from you has been amazing, and I'm so grateful that you're finding these videos helpful. So please be sure to go back into the comments and let us know if you have a tip. And of course, you know, something that might work for you when you open the stamp pads or, um, you know, something along those lines. So feel free to leave your comments in the, um, in, in the comment section. Would love to see. And don't forget to like and subscribe. If you found this video helpful and uh, maybe you picked up a tip along the way, please be sure to click that like button and subscribe. And also hit that notification bell so you're notified via YouTube as well. And of course, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, please let me know. I'd love the opportunity to help you answer any questions you have and in hopes of earning your business. And if you're one of my current customers, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you. And I hope that you're enjoying this video series as well. My goal was just to really kind of get people started stamping on their journey. As you know, this catalog can be overwhelming and it's like, where do I start? So we're gonna start with paper, ink, and stamps and just go through that process in hopes to get you on your crafting journey way. All right, thank you for stopping by. Take care, happy stamping.